This is the legend of a soldier and his girl, of his family, of the town he was born in, and of the death that flies by night, the small singing death, the Anopheles mosquito, bearer of the plague of malaria. It's a true legend. It has happened. It will happen again over and over in a hundred American towns unless we stop it from happening. The soldier is home on leave from the tropics. He's never had an attack of malaria, but he has been sickly, too weak to do his job. The drugs he has taken have kept down the symptoms. He does not know that he bears in his bloodstream the deadly Plasmodium falciparum, organism of the virulent tropical malaria. He feels better. He's glad to be home. He walks with his girl after supper. Peaceful in reunion. Peaceful in the lawn. The Catalpa. The last light over the lake. He brushes his cheek, but the mosquito has taken her blood meal and drifted out from under his hand. Now the cycle begins. The young soldier becomes the innocent bringer of misfortune and death to his people. The soldier was the first to fall sick, not because the mosquito bit him, but because he felt better at home, neglected the drugs he needed. They take him to the new military hospital. The commandant, an old Panama hand, recognizes the disease. He warns the county health officer. This is the soldier's town, a clean modern town, busy with the business of war. The town is in a malarial district, a few dozen cases each year, the milder endemic strain a long drag on the health of the people. A little ditching, a little draining of funds, but no long-term control, no planned cooperation between town and county and state, no settled program. Now, out beyond the limits of the town, a new danger waits, a wet spring and a rainy summer, the epidemic seventh year of the malarial cycle. In the borrow pits and lime sinks, in the ponds and swamps and impounded waters, along the stagnant creeks bordered with a growth of parrot feathers and lizard's tail and whoopiella, the Anopheles mosquitoes and the infected blood of the soldier breed together. The nearby army training field is a protected area, but a flying cadet is bitten off post in the hotel port in town. Two or three weeks later, the bone-shaking chills of Falcaparum catch him in the air. The crash truck and the ambulance. He wavers in like a storm-weary gull. Strikes hard. Fights the flame down. Rolls down the long runway in the sun. Too weak to climb out. The ambulance men get him down. Transfer him to the military hospital. A truck driver yaws off the road. Malaria is a favorite disease of poverty in the bottom, but it strikes high and low alike. The manufacturer's wife, the small boy calling for his mother, an old friend consults Dr. Hill. And Dr. Hill's 20-year demand for adequate malaria control reaches the boiling point. I ain't got any malaria. Well, we'll find out. The microscope won't lie. Still, fever, sweat, and nausea. Tell her I'll be around this afternoon. Dr. Neal? Yes? Beautiful, ethical, or some old type of malaria parasite. You? You mean to say I got malaria? I'm afraid so. I'll tell you, you go along and go to bed. I'll send you out some quinine, and I'll see you later. Good 
down here, Fred. I'm going to take you home myself. Just a minute. Virginia, you? get me the county health officer. Right away, please. The county health officer calls a meeting at the courthouse. We've got the epidemic. What are we going to do about it? I don't see that it's the citizen's responsibility. Malaria and mosquitoes don't breed within the city limits. The city does have an epidemic. The farm that breeds these mosquitoes are all around the city. You put up a sign for the city. The city limits. These mouths, they can't read the sign. It's the county and the city responsibility. The mosquitoes, they don't care who they're biting. Our city has never heard long to first spring where they helped the our community was concerned. Well, right. cool well, our uh, resources. We are cooperating with you. All the materials, such as men, trucks, oilers, that we have are at your disposal. Now we're going to get out of it. Well, we've got a job to do. And kill out this epidemic before the epidemic kills out half of our people. The mayor goes to work on the newspaper editor with an educational campaign in mind. The State Board of Health branch reports on a series of new blood specimens. The only mosquito control agency in the district, the University Field Station. The director explains the water table, lays out a campaign to establish the main centers of Anopheles breeding. The catalpas at the lake where the soldier was bitten. A good haul of adult Anopheles from the Weedy Island offshore. Thick blood smear and azure strain. A positive, but the patient is already dead. The inspector sucks up a sleeping quad. The mosquitoes seem to prefer the company of pigs. Another inspector picks them off the hay. The state malaria control engineer takes a hand in the hunt. The squirming larvae thick at Mossy Pond. The epidemic moves up to a peak at the end of summer. There are many deaths. The tall magnolia has a tree hole near its base, crowded with sleeping adults. The dead Anopheles lie like fluff in the chloroform tube. The story of malaria moves into the school. The control measures begin. In the soldier's room, the inspector finds a warped screen. A good screen might have helped to save the town from an epidemic. He opens the jet of the aerosol bomb. Freon, pyrethrum, and oil of sesame, a powerful, safe insecticide. Paris green blows out over the swamp water in a shining cloud. Free-flowing water tends to prevent the growth of eggs and larvae. Even a fish pool needs to be dusted. The cadet is back in harness. All over the country, field crews put in the foundations of a long-range control program, hand spraying and dragline ditching, line conduits, and a spray gun used at home. The big truck blower that roars out over the lime sink. But the dead have died. The lesson is learned. The Anopheles will vanish. The epidemic will fade out in the cooler weather of autumn. The town will flourish again, and the soldier will come home to his family and his girls.